to episode three. Hello, magnificent magnifiers, and welcome to episode three. Hello, magnificent magnifiers, and welcome to episode three. Hello, magnificent magnifiers, and welcome to episode three. What was all of that? I got really confused. Was it just me, or were there three of me in succession? I I don't know what happened. I, who knows? Maybe I gained three seconds of my life. Ooh. Welcome to Magnificent Magnifiers. This is episode three, where we unpack another story from the Bible and explore with a magnifying glass what it might mean uh, for our lives. The Bible is full of some amazing stories and incredible things that happen. So why don't you come on in and join us? If you're new to Magnificent Magnifiers, join in. Welcome. You can go back and watch the other two episodes uh, on the ch- on the YouTube channel um, where you found this one. But it's great to welcome you. Good to see you again. Thanks for joining us. And I hope you really enjoy today's story. Now, what was today's story, Oliver? Oh, he's not here. Today's story was, is Elijah. Today's story is about Elijah going to Mount Horeb. And God speaks to Elijah. Quite an amazing story. You ready for an earthquake? You ready for some wind? You ready for some fire? You ready? You sure? Definitely? All right, here we go. Come and join me for the story. Hello, everyone. It's time for another story. And this time we're looking at the story of Elijah from the Bible. Because it tells us something really, really exciting about who God is. So, are you sitting comfortably? Are you? Sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are you sitting comfortably? Excellent. Then if you're ready, I'll begin. Once upon a time, there was a man called Elijah. And Elijah went around from place to place, telling people all about the things that God would want to say to them, encouraging them to make the good decisions and do the right things by God. One day, The queen, Jezebel, decided that she did not like Elijah at all. And so she sent her messenger to find him to say, If I ever find you, you're going to prison. You should be very afraid. So Elijah ran away. He felt very scared and he ran as fast as he could. Eventually, worn out, he sat down under a broom plant and went to sleep. Suddenly, An angel poked Elijah and said, wake up, you've got a long journey ahead of you, you should eat something. So the angel gave Elijah some food and some water and he made sure he ate as much as he could. When Elijah had all his energy back, he got up and started walking to a place called Horeb. The journey took 40 days and 40 nights, but eventually Elijah reached the mountain of God. Climbing up the mountain, Elijah found a cave and he climbed inside to go to sleep for the night. The next day, God started talking to Elijah and he said, What are you doing here? Well, you see, God, I've done all this stuff for you, Elijah replied. I've put up with a rough time and the the queen, Jezebel, she wants to hurt me. And, and, and... Okay, said God. Go out and stand on the side of the mountain, because I am about to pass by the mountain. First, there was a mighty wind, like a hurricane. (sighs) Rocks smashed, the mountain shook, but God was not there yet. Then there came a huge earthquake. It was so powerful that it would make your teeth shake and your eyes wobble. But God was not there yet. Then there was a fire. So hot it would melt sand and turn it into glass. But God was not there yet. And then, then... There was nothing. No, wait. There it was again. A gentle whisper. Shh! It was so quiet. 
Elijah almost missed it. God had arrived and he started speaking to Elijah. Wow, what a story! Elijah was used to knowing what God would want to say on things, but now he's had a masterclass in hearing from God himself. That's just amazing. Now Elijah, Elijah had had a bit of a tough time before all of this happened. So God was really keen to let Elijah know that even though things were difficult, he was still able to speak to him and encourage him and help him out in the situation that he was in. It's amazing that God could have been so big and could have been so strong and yet God wanted Elijah to know that he was gentle and he speaks clearly. Okay, here we go, Magnificent Magnifiers. We are going to play a game. And today's game is Guess, Guess that, that Sound. And so, all you need to do, uh, if you're sitting comfortably, is listen for the sound and tell me what it is. Well, make a note for yourself and then I'll tell you the answer as we go along. So we've got 10 sounds and so 10 chances to guess that sound. Are you ready? Sorry, what was that? Are you ready? Oh, sorry. You are ready, here we go. Sound number one, coming up right now. Okay, take just a moment. What do you think that sound was? The answer was, it was an alarm. Sound number two, here we go. Of course, the answer was woof woof, a dog. Well done. Sound number three. Oh, a tricky one, this one. A basketball bouncing. Question, sound number four. Here we go. Okay, the answer to that one is a bell on a boy. You know the things that sit in the water out in the ocean? The things that uh, show where the channel is, markers to mark out the lanes. Some of them have a bell in the top. So if you put bell, well done. If you put a bell, a boy bell, give yourself a bonus point. That was even better. So here we go. Uh, our next sound is number five. Listen to this. Of course, the answer was elephants. No, sorry. The answer was bubbles. So well done if you got bubbles. Quest sound number six. Check this one out. Sound number six. Yes, I don't think we could mistake that for anything else. Chickens. Sound number seven. Here we go. Ooh, another tricky one. This is the sound of a heartbeat. Sound number eight. And the answer to that one, of course, is a, the sound of a racing car whoosh, driving past. Sound number nine. Check this one out. Of course... It's a tiger roar. Well, if you put lion, that's close enough because they sound a little similar, don't they? Uh, but if you put a big cat roaring, brilliant. You get a point. And our last sound. Okay, the answer to that one happens to be... A police car siren driving past. But a police car siren. So well done. Add up your scores out of 10. Give yourself a little round of applause. And if you got 10 out of 10, well, maybe you could ask your grown-up if you could have a special treat. I should stop saying things like that, shouldn't I? No, I should say it more often. Anyway, that was our game, Magnificent Magnifiers. And it was all about 
Guess that sound. Oliver, whichever side you're on, back to you. Welcome back to Magnificent Magnifiers. I hope you enjoyed that, the story, followed by the game. Could you, did you get all 10 sounds? Good job. However many you got, some of them were tricky, weren't they? I mean, a heartbeat, a bouncing basketball. Whose idea was that? Oh yeah, wait, it was mine. Uh, so, welcome back guys. I hope you've enjoyed those last couple of segments and the story of Elijah. We're thinking about God speaking to people and sounds and, and the way that the way that we might hear God today. So, but I want to help us uh, help us along with some actions to a little phrase. And it literally is this. God speaks to us. Do you want to join me in that? Come on, let's have a go together. God speaks to us. All right, let's do that one more time, just so you've uh, had a chance to, to, to memorise it. God speaks to us. All right, well done. That's great. We're going to use that phrase a couple of times through our next little conversation as we go. So uh, don't worry, we'll do it a couple of times when we get to it next. When you think about God, what comes to mind? Is he big? Is he powerful? Is he dangerous? Is he scary? Or is perhaps he's happy and he's talkative and he likes spending time with people? What we think about God often shapes how we might talk to him. Now, if you were talking to someone that you love, your mum, your dad, your, your grandparents, your brother or sister, even if they're winding you up at the moment, I know you love them, uh, or maybe your auntie, your uncle, someone, amazing friend, someone that you love, it's really easy to talk to them, isn't it? Chatter, chatter, chatter. Just remember when you're sat next to your best friend in school and your teacher keeps looking at you going, would you please stop talking? Or was it just me when I was at school? No, did you do it too? You know what I mean. When, we've, when we're talking to someone that we love, it's really easy to just chat and talk and there's nothing to worry about. Everything is great. Play games, hang out together. Wonderful. And that's like God. Because he loves me... I can be really chatty with him and he can talk to me as well. Let's do our actions again. Do you remember what they were? God speaks to us. Okay, let's do that one more time. God speaks to us. Well done. But what happens when there's a lot of noise in the background? So it's just a bit like me... Can you hear me? Were you able to hear me then? What was that noise? Where did that come from? Look, like I was saying, it's great when we, to be able to talk to each other, but it's really hard to talk when there's lots of... What's going on? Oh, that's better. Can you hear me now? Oh, that's good. Yes, good, good. All right, okay, you can hear me now. Wonderful. So, like I was trying to say, it's a bit like... Oh, that silly aeroplane! Why is he so loud? He keeps interrupting, interrupting my thought. It can be really hard, can't it, sometimes, uh, to hear someone when there's a lot of background noise. What did you all say? I couldn't hear you. You probably couldn't hear me over all of that racket that was going on around us. As we saw in the story of Elijah, God invites us to listen, to see if we can hear him. He's not in the big, the loud, the noisy stuff, like the earthquake, like the wind, like the fire, but he's in the shh, that still, small voice. We can hear his still small voice though, but we can hear it through uh, sometimes an impression on our hearts, sometimes through the wisdom that other people bring. When someone says something that's very wise and you just go, 
that was right. By pointing us towards Jesus, anything that kind of points us towards Jesus is what God has in mind. And quietly whispering to us, just like God whispered to Elijah, it was a still, small voice. Not a foghorn, not a megaphone, not a dangerous sound, but a gentle and a kind sound. Let's do our actions one more time. God speaks to us. God speaks to us. Well done. And how can we know it's God? Well, two really important things. We sense his presence with us. God can be known. He's active and alive today. You can know God's presence with you. And it's full of joy. It's always full of joy. And it's always wise too. God would never ask you to do something foolish, silly, unwise, dangerous, stupid, anything like that. God's not speaking to us like that. He doesn't want to encourage our hearts to do foolish things. He wants us to grow and become wise. And that's why he speaks to us too, so we can grow and learn from him. Last time, God speaks to us. Very good. One more time. God speaks to us. Well done, boys and girls. That's fantastic, magnificent magnifiers. So remember that God speaks today and he can speak to you as well as speaking to me. If we ask him and we listen, God is speaking and he loves to talk and to chat with us. Thank you for watching. This has been Magnificent Magnifiers episode number three and we'll see you again for our next episode.